Fantastic. Thank you, uh, Francis. I am very much with you. I hope that you can see my presentation. And yes. uh, first, first of all, I would like to to thank you and express my big thanks to the Digital at Sea Asia Pacific for inviting me uh, to give this virtual presentation. Uh, this is a very interesting subject and very interesting conference, so many thanks. And I also want to express my thanks to, uh, to you, uh, Francis, uh, in particular for your introduction, of course, uh, and for the wise words regarding what is nice to ha have and what is necessary to have to have maritime digitization. Very important sentence. Uh, there's no doubt that uh, maritime transport is uh, backbone of world command. And, uh, but when it comes to maritime digitalization, uh, shipping has been lacking significantly behind for some reasons. But I believe that this is about to change. Uh, we will, in a few years' time, see a radical change in shipping uh, to become more operational efficient and also uh, having more safety uh, on board due to digitalization and also have a much better environmental performance uh, due to the digitalization. Uh, my key conclusion for this presentation is to raise an awareness of an IMO implementation deadline on 1st January 2024, and I will come back to that important date. Um, I just want to see if I can change my slide. <laughs> Here it is. Um, there are, of course, many hot topics uh, in the maritime uh, uh, conferences. And uh, when looking just at keywords from 2022, you can see a lot of them regards digitalization and, uh, and uh, environmental uh, subjects. So this is a key elements of my presentation. Um, there's a lot of different interpretations of what is digitalization. And uh, if you ask the people in the operation, they are interested in fuel consumptions. If you ask the charterer, it's about uh, when the ship is coming to the port, loading and unloading. And if you go to the hinterland, it's about when the ship is arriving and departing. And then if you ask the administrative uh, authorities, it's details about uh, the port call information. But all these stakeholders do have different focus in the logistic chain. Uh, so if we want to, to capture everything into the digitalization, we need to look how can we connect ship and shore in a better way? Uh, how can we enhance the predictability? predictability um, with regard to movements and operations, and also how can we ensure seamless integration uh, in the transport chain. In this regard, as my presentation is uh, named, harmonization and interoperability is keywords to this digitalization. Um, as mentioned by um, Mr. Mick Kinley uh, uh, in his opening speech, uh, just in time is an obvious case in this regard because it combines digitalization and sustainability. And uh, the same I will do in my uh, presentation that I will use this, uh, this just in time concept because it's, um, it's, a, it's a very easy case to understand uh, because you have emission reductions directly, and you will also see uh, uh, reductions in emissions in the port area. This is a, a slide showing uh, some of uh, the data information to be exchanged with regard to the just-in-time uh, case. Um, the biggest change from the past is that we have to have much better uh, information sharing between all stakeholders in the port. Um, there are already a lot of, of standards in place, um, in particular because uh, there has been different focuses when uh, standards has been developed. Um, but there's also a lot of overlapping in the specifications. I think the general issue 
uh, is that we as industry uh, do have a willingness to do something related to maritime digitization across shipping, but we do have a lower willingness to go for more universal standards, meaning that we adopt each other. The problem is not the standards, because we have lots of them, but the problem is that we actually do have too many, and which one to ensure interoperability and harmonization, which one to select. Um, the previous speaker kindly mentioned the IMO compendium. It's, it's actually a key in, in, in this uh, digitalization, in particular when it comes to maritime single windows. Uh, World Custom Organization, UNECE, ISO, IMO, many other players has jointly developed this uh, common IMO reference data model. And during the far past few years, it has matured and is now a realistic implementation element. Uh, currently, the reference data model consists of uh, about 550 data elements. Um, additional 150 elements are pending for data modeling and uh, about 200 new elements are up for discussion and will be soon implemented as well. The data sets uh, concerns the FAL forms, the fertilization forms, uh, the declaration of health, stowaways, uh, just-in-time concept, as I mentioned, and mandatory ship reporting, just to mention some few. And, and the interesting thing is that the compendium has got lots of traction and gets a lot of input from various contributors from industry. So it's it's not only a thing related to maritime single window, but it's also a standard a data model which can be used across for the maritime digitalization. But when it comes to the information, what kind of information is is to be exchange. We have the ship integrated data, it's the temperature as I mentioned, we have the nautical data, we have operational data, administrative data, and business to business data. And all these elements, I repeat, all these elements are actually covered in the IMO reference data model. So it's a very extensive uh, and comprehensive document which should be used uh, as much as possible. Um, the compendium is a solution which may fit most solutions um, and harmonization and interoperability is vital for the success. Um, the, 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 the interesting thing in this regard, it's, it's combined what is sent from ship too sure to the authorities, but it also capture what is uh, transmitted from shore to ship. And it's a kind of bow tie. The maritime single window is, uh, I believe it's to the right on the screen right now. I believe it is. Um, the maritime single window is situated to the right of the IMO reference data model, whereas the industry input to the single window is to the left of the bow tie. It's a very important that we make use of this reference data model to exchange information in an easy and smart way so we can have the machine-to-machine -machine solution. It is an op a window of opportunities, um, and it will ease the administrative burden on board, but certainly also ashore, and it will increase the quality of data and uh, also the efficiency in the in the operation of the ship, meaning that we will have reduction in the air emission. The case of the just-in-time is included in the reference data model. So by use of this data structure, we can exchange information on the just-in-time uh, in a smart and easy way through the maritime single window. See, now we come to the to the 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 conclusion of my my presentation because as the previous speaker mentioned as well um we have a deadline first january 24 and that is that we need to establish digital facilitation declaration forms but also an obligation to establish a single window and see if we do not 
collaborate across industry, across all actors, then we will end up having loads of different solutions, meaning that we cannot exchange information in a smart way. The ships will have 3,000 different solutions on board, and the solutions, the, the maritime single windows ashore, may have input from 100,000 ships in a different way. It's not structured. But if we make use of the IMO reference data model as a basis in the concept, then we can actually share uh, information in a smart and easy way by using the same language. I can only emphasize, consider this as a basis in your solution when you develop uh, any kind of solution, digital solutions. Conclusion uh, and outlook. Harmonization, interoperability is key, and we have to do smarter collaboration uh, beyond our own interest, if I may, saying that this is a situation where we have momentum creating maritime digitalization. And if we fail now, it will be a very long voyage before we will end up in the same situation once again. So please consider Go beyond your own personal interest and make use of standards in such a way that we can have a maritime digitalization in a smart and easy way. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair.